Continuing the series on Fiber Bundles, in the previous video titled Fiber Bundles 1, I have talked uh, about some of the things and introduced fi Fiber Bundles or the concept of Fiber Bundles. And so at this point, we have virtually established almost everything that we need to have a definition of a Fiber Bundle. So far, we know that a Fiber Bundle is created out of three manifolds right and we know what those three manifolds are first one is the total space e second one is the base space b and of course we have fibers f right and we also know that we have the projection map that is pi which is the projection from the total space E to base space B. And we also have uh, an inverse uh, projection or a pre-map for let's say a point P in the total space, which has to be or is diffeomorphic to the fiber F, right? Now let's, uh, talk about trivial bundles uh, well specifically let's talk about the difference between trivial and more sophisticated bundles so i'm going to use a diagram over here i already have it in the clipboard so let's see yeah, let's just put it over here neat okay now note that this uh, subset b over here this one it is it is uh, or this set b it is not a subset of this uh, set e right because remember we know that this thing e total space is the cartesian product of two separate things base space b and the fiber f right now uh this thing over here, I'll get into more depth of what this diagram is. Uh, well, let's say that you have a subset UI that is over here in yellow. Uh, it's a cover, right? So let's say that a subset UI that is in B, that is a part of a cover or an open cover of B, so this thing ui is an open cover of b and what i mean by uh open cover let me just write it over here this thing ui is an open cover of b an open cover is just uh, or of a set is just a collection of sets of a topological space whose union itself is inside uh, or it contains a given subset, right? So let's say, for example, let me just give a very neat example. You have uh, this real line R. It's open cover with respect to some topology. Let's take Euclidean topology is just a set of all open intervals from minus N to N. And it's an open interval uh, where this n it is an element of all the natural numbers n right now from here we have to demand something right uh, but let's first start off by uh, demanding something about the about the topology of this space e over here right okay so we know uh, any open set in B, so wait, over here it's UI, has a pre-image in E, right? So we can see that this uh, here, over here, this line, this pi minus one, this thing, we know that it, uh, uh, this open set in B has a pre-image in E. We know this because if this does not happen, then the map will be, the map pi will be discontinuous. 
Uh, and so for a map to be a continuous is the pre-images of open sets under that particular mapping must be uh, open in the given domain, right? And so I can say that the continuity of a map depends on the behavior of open set under the inverse mapping, that is this pi minus one, right? So in our case, if I pick a open set in this UI that is inside this yellow dotted line, uh, we get a set in E, which would be uh, then, uh, let me draw over here, and let me use different color. So I'd get an open set in E, uh, which would be pi minus one uh, of UI, right? Of all these uh, UIs. And this set will be again open in E, right? Okay, so, uh, yeah, let's change the color back. Okay, we also, uh, we know that uh, from the previous video, if you're still wondering if I have not explained this diagram that I uh, made over here, uh, we know from previous video where what this, uh, this set is in red and uh, what is this point P? So we know that we have a map that takes uh, from point P to this thing or an inverse map that takes point P and it puts out or gives us a set of, uh, well, it gives us a set of points and it's called the pre-image. And this pre-image has to be diffeomorphic to this thing that is essentially, it's, it has to be diffeomorphic to the fibers, right? So yeah, that's what this is. But coming back to what we were talking about, uh, uh, yeah, it, we we're talking about this thing. So now, because the topology in E is defined as uh, it is defined as let's write it over here. So the topology on E is defined as this thing uh, as a set of all the uh, as a set of all the pre images. So this one, such that the uh, and the UIs uh, is an element of the topology of the base space uh, B. So because of this, you may go uh, well. Uh, uh, actually, you can uh, you can if you want to, you can uh, prove that this uh, this thing over here it is uh, it is indeed a topology right so you can prove this yourself but this topology it makes the projection map continuous and that's what we need so even such a coarse topology will do for us right now and now in in order for uh, everything to be uh, a true fiber bundle, uh, the image or the pre-image uh, that is uh, pi inverse ui uh, has a commitment, right? So there is a well constraint or something you can say. Uh, yeah, I'd stick with commitment. And that commitment is that it has to be diffeomorphic. This thing has to be diffeomorphic. Let me write it over here. Diffeomorphic. To what? It has to be diffeomorphic to the Cartesian product of UI and the fibers, F. Right. So if I go back over here and let me just rearrange, uh, what am I doing? Let me just rearrange all of this. Let me just bring it down a bit. I think this will do. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm saying is that, uh, and that for a true fiber bundle, 
the pre-image has a commitment and that is simply that it has to be uh, it has to be diffeomorphic to this thing that is ui cartesian f so let's just write it like this so all i'm saying is that it has to be diffeomorphic to this so um well now if it if that is the case right then this is then what will make uh, any given set in e or n or, or i'm sorry any given set e uh, it would make it locally trivial so that's what we are looking for for a set to be uh, trivial it this has to be true right so what i mean is that if we go to any region of E, so any region in this E uh, that is open in E, because we already know that if it is open in E, then it corresponds to a pre-image of some set that is in B, right? Okay, so we can then make a diffeomorphic mapping to nothing more than the open region inside B. Uh, well, not inside B, inside this thing that's, uh, uh, inside, the, inside this thing, right? Uh, B, uh, Cartesian product with the generic fiber F, right? So, well, this mapping itself is actually very important and in, and in books, you will see it uh, labeled as labeled as phi i. So let me write it over here. So you will see it labeled as phi i and uh, the sub index that is i, it refers to some uh, to the region u i, right? So there is this reference with UI. So we say we, uh, we got our trivial structure and we can map it to the total space E and project it uh, to get back UI, right? Okay, so now also note that uh, there is also another way uh, instead of this phi i what we can also have is something that's pi and psi right it's a weird psi but yeah okay and we and this uh, phi i it actually goes uh, from the uh, the the trivial uh, cartesian product to the total space, but this thing, uh, this set pi and psi actually does the opposite of that. So that is that it goes from the total space to the trivial Cartesian product. So what this tells me is that phi i is the inverse of pi and psi. So I can then write this thing down that phi i is equal to uh, pi comma psi inverse and I can also write down that my uh, pi comma psi uh, well they're both the same thing inverse is equal to uh, is equal to phi i right okay so well with this if i go back to this uh, diagram over here this mapping over here this one i hope you can see it i'm making it a bit bold this one and this one right if you consider these two over here this one is phi i and the opposite of this, that is this one, pi comma psi, right? So this is, corresponds to this and phi i is this one. 
So you can see that phi i is going from ui cross f, the Cartesian product, to the total space E, while pi comma psi is going from uh, the total space E to the Cartesian product, right? Now, uh, now you may wonder what uh, this phi really is, right? What is this phi i? So I said that it's um, it's very important mapping, and so from there you know it. At least you know that it's a map, but uh, it's actually a mapping from e to f, right? So phi i is a map from e to f now more uh, speaking in a more detailed manner i should say phi is a mapping from the pre image if i if you go back at this diagram and you look at it so i can say that phi over here is a mapping from the pre image of the open set of the cover in b that uh, that and that pre-image gets mapped to the generic fiber f right so i'll stop this uh, lecture over here and i will leave you with a question in your head that let's say or consider that if i have the same diagram over here but now instead what i have is let's get rid of this over here, let's say that my UI is, uh, let's just, I'm just making it small, right? And let's get rid of this P. We also, now also we have another one, another uh, this cover, and it intersects with UI, let's call it UJ, right? Now UJ will also correspond to a map right or a pre-image in e over here and it would be different than this one that is over here right it would be different than that it would be something else and so it but it would also be an intersection with this uh but we also to do that i also have to tell you that we have a point instead of having a point p over there i have a point p that is in the intersection of this uj and ui. Now the question is, if I have something like this, how would things play out in this scenario, right? And you can think about it, but that would be the topic for the next lecture in this series.